Isn't EXP a scam? I mean, that's what I thought when it was originally presented to me. Was that your first inclination too? Like, man, this is a scam. Uh, no, I never thought it was a scam. Previous coaching systems would ask me, do you want to be a recruiter or do you want to be an agent? Mm. And it would downplay the agent attraction as if there was something wrong with it. You've been with the company for how long? A year? A little less than a year. A little less than a year. Yeah. Did it affect your production at all? Not actually, it's made it better. That's so interesting. I think that I never thought it was a scam. I just thought that the way that people positioned it, they called, you know, EXP people recruiters. Mm -hmm. And there are people who go out there and recruit versus attracting, mm -hmm. right? So I think our organization does a good job of putting ourselves out there and really attracting the right people that want to join us yeah. and not so much going out there and being like hey you know right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? i know that you both are again very powerful strong not only humans but also agents so i'm positive that you were approached by other people like oh yeah a hundred percent probably multiple different times so maybe you can talk a little bit about how you made the decision of who you were gonna partner with. Cause I'm aware that this is like relationships plus value over time. Sure. And we've had relationships, you know, over an extended period of time, but also that value piece. And sometimes people imagine, uh, you know, just because we know each other and we're cool, <laughs> that that should do it. Yeah. Where they forget about the value piece. So maybe you talk a little bit about that. What's important to you, right? So if what is important to you is showing off and going to fancy parties, you're probably gonna choose a different agent to partner with mm. right if what's important to you is creating an income mm -hmm. and having what you need to provide for your family that's you're 100 percent going to partner with an elite builder you taught me exactly what to say how to say it what to do to make money now yeah and i needed money now yeah so for me that was a no-brainer i yeah. had been approached twice prior which we spoke about we did and uh one of the times it was you know just like i guess telling me about the exp about you know the company with it within itself mm -hmm. but what their organization offered there was no value mm -hmm. you know it was also a person that was doing the same numbers as me so like i wanted to partner with someone that was already where i wanted to go sure mm -hmm. and so that was i was like no i'm good you know yeah. and then the second time was it was the brand you know, and, and again, there was no skill set that I feel like I needed to learn from them. Right. And then obviously when it was presented to mm -hmm. me in the proper way, yeah, then it was a no brainer. Definitely. Yeah. Do you have any questions or is anything no, coming up for you? She makes a great point about how you presented it. Yeah. And I think one of the things that you add value, another way you add value is you teach people how to present about EXP for sure. because that's what they're going out there to do as well. Yeah. You know, you have this whole slide deck and you explain it so well with like the value stack, how the models, like the old way that real estate was, how it's evolving, sure. what that means for the business, yeah. the industry. So I think that's a huge piece of the value. That makes sense. Thanks, babe. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> so and now that you've uh, been with the company, I think both of you guys like about a year right. and you've been elite builders for like about a year. Maybe share like your experience up until this point, because I think a lot of people, um, just in general in life, because I think marketers, they can oftentimes uh, un, like kind of overpromise and underdeliver. So it's like, oh yeah, all this stuff is going to happen. It's going to be great, blah, blah, blah. And then like you actually get in and you're like, mm, this isn't what I thought it was. So maybe you talked a little bit about that versus the value that's promised and the value that's delivered. I was at a bro brokerage at one point that there was a lot of promise and that's exactly what I called it, over-promising and under-delivering. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, many broken promises, many things that said that were going to be done and never happened. So, you know, you always get left with kind of a bad taste, yeah. you know, and then when you do join an organization where it is met, you know, all the things that have been promised, it is a breath of fresh air. Yeah. You know, and you feel so, so empowered by all the value that is actually given to you or provided to you. That's awesome. Well, it means I'm, I'm so happy that that's your experience because that 1000% is the intention. I would call myself like a mid producing agent. And I think a lot of agents who come from our coaching that we've all done are in the same place, like mm -hmm. 25 to 75. And the goal for all those people is like a million GCI, mm -hmm. right? So I get to a million GCI, I made it. I'm a somebody. And it's like kind of ego based. And when you're moving in that direction without the right 
partners mm-hmm. and the right alignment, you are burning out. Like you're hitting the ceiling. You don't have the right systems. No one's teaching you those systems. Mm. You don't have the right agents to help you perform because you don't know how to partner with people in a way that's collaborative versus pushing them down. Mm. So you're not able to grow together and you're constantly hitting this wall that you cannot get past. Also, like you pour into us and you watch us evolve, but the same way we've watched you evolve. Yeah. Because so we like, were talking last night where you were like, yeah. bro, you used to like rag on social media and, and like it, look at me like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's crazy to watch too, because I think that someone who's, you know, done more than us, you know, to watch them also grow and not stay stagnant. It also gives us like- you believe in like your leader. 1000%. Yeah. You yeah. know, so that's a big deal too. Yeah, that's terrific. And I yeah. appreciate you, your kind words. Because- what I'm aware of is, is if I want to continue to, as I grow more, I can give more. And if right. I want to hold the attention or add value to people of your guys' caliber and others that have partnered with us, I have to be constantly growing and evolving and changing and having a willingness to change my mind. You were funny. You were like, yeah, bro, you used to look at me and be like, oh, you post? I list. <laughs> That's cool. And now you see me like, you know. All over social all media. All over social media. And, doing and then he tells me, I'm catching up to you. I know I did. I'm, I'm catching up to you. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's cool because as you guys were sharing this like uh me and jose were talking he's in the room by the way he's just uh, over there What's but up, um Jane? as uh <laughs> this is a family affair we were talking about like different opportunities or vehicles that are available to them and it's almost as though like let's say me and jose were like hey we went like nine tenths of the way into a forest fought off all the bears and lions and fell down and ate some berries we shouldn't have and got sick and like this whole thing and then we get to like the end of the forest and we look at each other and we're like, oh, this isn't the way. Yeah. Like, this is cool. And we learned a lot from it. At the same time, it's not the most leveraged way. It doesn't have provide for the most margin. Because to your point, what you were describing, it's, ve- it's more common than it's not. I think it's the rule, not the exception, mm-hmm. which is that success in our business traditionally is working 80 hours a week. Yeah. And if I do that, there's zero margin in my life for these other transcendental needs that I have, like spiritual needs, like like family, like relationship needs, like mental needs, physical needs. Looking at the landscape, looking at the vehicles that I have at my disposal and saying like, okay, which one provides me with the biggest platform and multiple different ways of receiving compensation Mm -hmm. that will allow me to have margin in my life so I can not only have resources, but I can also have awesome relationships that I can also have, you know, my mental health be on point, physical health be on point, because usually those other things fall to the wayside. Absolutely. Being within EXP, being within the elite builders, like what is your ultimate vision of like what you can grow? Oh, y'all need to give me an hour for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I like that you're thinking really big. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know my God-given mission is to help the disenfranchised and empower them. Uh, my personal story I know that I'm here for a purpose and EXP gave me the ability to really, truly do that. The, all the agents who partner with me, you guys watch them probably, right? They are not what you think of as successful. They have gone through a lot of hardships, a lot of adversity, and what we have given them has empowered them to be wealthy, create wealth, and also invest wealth and have multiple income streams, something that most women don't even talk about. We don't even know about, right? Yeah. You're here for a reason. And I'm like, so here for it. I'm yeah. ready to watch you go all the way. Yeah. Thank and it reminds me of like how when we had dinner, maybe it was like two years ago. And you told me a story that I don't think you shared with a lot of people. Yeah. And when you told it to me, I was like, immediately what I said to you. You need to share that with the world. Yeah. I'm like, you need to share that with everybody. Like yeah. everybody needs to hear that. And you were like, ah, at the time. And now you've grown into yeah like more people do need to hear that because it's not it's not really about you it's not about um kind of what you personally been through it's more about hey this is a story that can empower others yeah it's right? inspiring super inspiring even if you haven't gone through something similar it's like what am i what are my excuses like look yeah. what she has gone through and look where she right. is like what's my excuse yeah. <laughs> what made me Really, number one, appreciate what EXP is about and what we're about is when I got pregnant during COVID and I had no other income other than what my production was, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, so that made me realize that I needed to tap into something else. 
there was something else that I needed to, because I mean, you break a leg and you can't go out doing showings. Sure. Like something happens to you health wise. What are you going to do? Yeah. So that really was the tipping point. And obviously when he jumped ship, I was like, wow. Go with you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you most excited about? Right. Because I, th I feel like this platform opens up like this huge runway. So your next three, five, kind of 10, or let's say three to five year vision for not only your production, but also, um, you know, with attraction and things of that nature, like, what are you the most excited about at this moment? I, I love being here. Yeah. I love that we're all here together. This is the first one. I know. Like 20 years from now, we're going to remember this in like, that was our first time. It's funny. I told Jose because we were out overlooking in the mountains as, as we're sitting there. And I said, bro, I want you to remember something. He's like, what? I'm like, this is the funnest part. This part yeah. where it's like, bro, when you're having these conversations, what happens if when we do this, like, it's going to be like this. It's mm -hmm. the fun. It's actually more enjoyable than when you do it. The fun isn't getting there. The right. fun isn't getting there. Okay. And it's the, the journey yeah. and the people that you're with, like how powerful it is that right now they, they can't see as they're watching this. But we have like five, six individuals in one room that are all super powerful, all with the intention on collaborating and helping each other accomplish their goals and objectives. And we all truly believe in each other. Yeah. 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 There's no competition in this no. room. Like we are truly lifting each other up, which you really don't see in a lot of places. No. Right. So I'm really excited. I see, I buy into the vision from the first time you told me. Yep. And I want to say, like, I ran with it in my direction yeah. and my direction just kind of helped close the circle a little bit for all that's of right. us. That's, <laughs> right. that's that's what we're all doing. We're running out, all of us, right? We're going as far as we can go and we're just making our circle bigger. That's right. I love and we it. all have our own gifts, yeah. you know, that we bring to the table. Some of us are really good at sales, at presenting. Some of us are really good at systems. Right. Some of us are really good at empowering women. Some of us has, have inspiring stories. Some right. of, you know, like we each have our little piece to the puzzle, but when you put it all together, it's a masterpiece. Well, her and I were even talking last night about how I picked a coach mm -hmm. and going back to being collaborative versus competition. I told her, I was like, I wanted someone in my market. So she told me, I find that interesting because most people would think, I don't want the competition. I don't want yeah. mm -hmm. my coach to take my business. And I was like, I've never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I always thought, like, South Florida market's a wild, wild west. I want someone who understands the wild, wild west. Yeah. I want a gunslinger, baby. Like, yeah. You know, <laughs> that, that made me respect you more. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, no, I need someone here. That's I need someone who mindset. understands. Like, it's not going to take my business. There's enough for all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it was, yeah, that was our little... Some people have that scarcity mindset, though. I They're don't. like, oh, they're going to steal yeah. from me. Yeah. But your mindset was like, I want more. And how do I find more? Well, right. it's a huge transition because uh, I was talking with another one of our partners, Brian, and he knew me. Uh, he was at an office that I used to have ownership in. And he knew me. He, he knew a previous version of me, mm -hmm. which was like the Kaiser Soze of real estate. Like nobody ever saw me. I would come into the <laughs> office once a year, unannounced, give a talk. People would come in the room. And then I just like peace out, wouldn't talk to anybody and leave. <laughs> and, uh, Very so, social, Aaron. <laughs> I know. I know. And I, I wasn't, I wasn't kind of, um, I was playing finitely. I wasn't playing infinitely. So... But I can attest to mine and Carla's life has changed dramatically in a three-year time span because I stopped looking at people as competitors and started looking at them as collaborators. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that's true is that harder work, like grinding, leads to in incremental gains. Like there's an importance to hard work. Mm -hmm. I think everybody in here is like super hard workers. I push up against anybody. But it, what I mean by incremental gains is like if I, you know, make... 50, 60, 100 contacts a day, and I do that for a year, like I might do 10 more deals, 15 more deals, like an incremental gain. But a quantum leap where you go from one place to like a 10x or like a 15x or 20x different place that comes from different strategies, different techniques, different mental maps, different approaches, different vehicles. So I just want to kind of commend you guys for moving in that direction towards different thoughts, different strategies, mm -hmm. different vehicles. And it truly is like a, a privilege and a pleasure to partner with you. Thank you. Let's go. Let's grow. Both of you. So I got a question for you guys. What is the best tool or vehicle to generate leads? How many people think it's proactive and aggressive outbound prospecting? Picking up the phone, knocking on doors. How many people? Show of hands. 